This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace. So I started picking all the apples yesterday, but it was getting too dark, which is why I stopped. So we're going to continue now. We're going to make some blackberry and apple crumble. The blackberries are some that I foraged hmm, a couple of weeks ago now, maybe a month ago. And I froze them so that they'd be ready specifically for my crumble. But we have quite a few of them. So we're going to make a really big apple crumble today, apple and blackberry. And then we're going to take it over to my brother's house. I'm going to have dinner with them and we're going to share it with them, which will be really nice. What else? The swim this morning was so cold, but after a while it was actually really nice. I take, I guess my body has started getting used to the cold water swims because I've done so many this year. But yeah, you of, of course have to be careful and I never ever go alone. I always make sure I go with someone and today we particularly wanted to go because it was very calm. Anyway, we're going to go and pick some apples. We've got to get the the stepper out because there are some really high up. There aren't as many apples this year. I'm not quite sure why. It could be because I think my friend Aerie was telling me that apples, trees have a kind of seasonal thing like each, every other year they have lots and then have less. I, I'm not quite sure. I'm still very much learning about seasonal eating and growing food and stuff like that. So we're going to go and harvest the rest that are edible and take the rest of the trees so they don't rot and So if you watch my video preparing for autumn, you'll see that I decided to try and make a hot fermented, well, hot sauce, obviously it's hot, 
don't know what I was thinking just then. Anyway, it's been several weeks now about, well, I fermented it for about three weeks and then I wasn't ready to make it. So I put it in the fridge for an additional couple of weeks and now it's ready. So I'm just blending it up with some coriander as per what the Elliot Homestead said, I think I was following their recipe. I'm just blending it up with some of the liquid from the fermentation process, but I strained that and kept that to the side to use for my next batch. So after I took it out, I wanted to just try it before I added in the apple cider vinegar, and well, this was my reaction. I had obviously forgotten how many scotch bonnets I'd put in there, but the flavor is amazing. So, oh, 100% worth it. We had loads of scotch bonnets and loads of other chilies that we needed using up. Yeah, so that's why it's so spicy. I'm adding in some apple cider vinegar just to give it some of some acidity. I think that's what the recipe was sort of talking about because I also put some sweet peppers in there. So this isn't just scotch bonnets and other chilies. It's uh, mostly scotch bonnets, a few other big chilies as you can see here, but also some sweet peppers, some garlic and some onion as well. So it's quite sweet, or not, but not too sweet and then the apple cider vinegar. So that's done. I just blend that up and now I'm gonna put it in the fridge because it will continue to ferment, I think, but very, very, very slowly, but it's honestly delicious. So we are moving on to make another batch. I'm keeping that liquid just to help the fermentation process. And also there's there's no point in, in discarding that brine. We love to reuse things. We love to reduce food waste. We love to be as sustainable as possible. And all of these scotch bonnets are the last ones from our scotch bonnet tree for the year. So we're using all of these up. I'm putting in more garlic this time and I'm putting in half an onion. So a lot more onion than I did before. I just want to experiment now. Now that I've done one thing successfully, it gives you a lot more confidence to try new things and try experimenting and trying different ways to just make delicious stuff. I also ended up putting in a quarter of an orange bell pepper just for a little bit of sweetness and then to push everything down after adding in some filtered water and some salt, I put in a half a red bell pepper just to kind of keep everything submerged but I'm using a different pot here. This pot is specifically for fermentation so you can seal it shut quite firmly but it has a I, I think a one-way breathing hole, I don't know what you call it, so that air can leave without, you know, the whole thing exploding or the whole thing just getting overwhelmed. And because obviously I put liquid all the way up to the top, it also through the whole liquid can escape as well. So it's all safe doing it this way. So we've got our old hot sauce and our new one. So exciting. I feel like autumn is a time for baking and baking not necessarily my strong suit. Then again, cooking wasn't either 18 months ago, but we have come very far. So I'm finally making some Welsh cakes. I usually use my mum's recipe, um, but hers is sort of, it uses like an egg replacer and things like that. So I decided today to try using avant-garde vegans Welsh recipe because he's also actually Welsh. So I can be sure that, you know, he knows, he knows how special Welsh cakes are and he knows that it's a special, special kind of dish. This really simple. You literally have plain flour, caster sugar, currants, baking powder, mixed spice, uh, margarine, or I used, a, I used a vegan margarine, of course. I think I use one that's specifically for baking. I can't quite remember. I don't usually tend to buy these because obviously they come in plastic packaging and also I just don't love them that much, but they're pretty essential for baking. So once you have made everything into a crumb, you pretty much add in some plant-based milk until it becomes a dough and then you roll it out. I'll leave the link to Avant-Garde Vegan's recipe in the link below. It's so simple, it's so easy. I'd give it a three out of 10 in terms of difficulty, whereas one is easy and 10 is difficult. So it's pretty easy. And then you just cut them out into little cake shapes and you cook them on either side for mm, maybe a couple of minutes. You just wanna keep an eye on them to make sure they are browning nicely. I like them to be quite thick because 
I like the outside to be crispy and the inside, once it's cooled, to still be not doughy, but quite soft and absolutely delicious. I also make loads of these at a time because I freeze them and they are so easy. They just, they just freeze really well. And when you want to take them out, either you can take them out a couple of hours before, let them defrost, or you can just shove them in a microwave, to be honest. One minute, absolutely perfect. Nice and warm. Mm. Now here's the taste test. This is the first time he's ever tried Welsh cakes and these are freshly baked Welsh cakes. Now that's the reaction you want, isn't it? These cakes just remind me of childhood. They just remind me of my mum making them. They're just a luxurious little easy cake that are just wonderful. Oh, I mean, look at that. Look at that. The only problem with making so many is that you do end up eating them all day. But to be honest, what is autumn for if it's not for baking? For cups of tea, for afternoon tea breaks and coffee. Oh, what a magical time of year. So just to end this video, I wanted to show you some of the squash that you can get that are seasonal right now. You've got a butternut squash and a kabocha squash. This is a spaghetti squash. They are so fun and delicious. These are munchkin squash. You can't eat these. These are munchkin pumpkins, sorry. And they are just for decoration. But this is a carnival pumpkin or squash and it is delicious. We've also got a queen just behind it that you couldn't see. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members and send email communications and leverage audience insights. I love creating a community over on Squarespace because I can use their fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. So if you're interested, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash sustainably vegan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.